Okay, now I'd like to talk a little bit about heart-related disorders. There are hundreds of these, and I've got about four that I want to point out. There are four of hundreds, so it's, um, it's a pick-and-choose kind of thing. Here's a photo I thought that was interesting. Two dogs that are laying, looks like in the back of a car or a chair, I guess. It might be like a lazy boy. That are in the shape of a heart. I thought that was kind of cute. So the first heart-related disorder I'd like to talk about is what's called septal defects. Well, we should know what a septum is because that's where septal comes from. Septum many definitions of this word but the ones in biology are the important thing and a septum is a dividing partition between two tissues or cavities and in this case the cavities are the chambers of the heart okay so we're going to look at some defects in the walls i'm going to move that out of the way so i can get a couple examples here okay well here's one I brought down and I'll enlarge it a little bit and what was kind of neat about this drawing is if you've seen my earlier heart lessons I've drawn the heart as a box and almost like this and I guess I was doing my drawing before I saw these or this one and I've seen others on the internet now that I've been searching so this is kind of neat the kicker here is and I'll get my laser pointer going is I want you to concentrate over here where there's a ventricular septal defect if you remember from my previous drawings and I'm going to do this line the walls between the left and right heart are solid supposedly or normal cases Remember how I say the heart is really two pumps side by side and there's no mixing between the two sides. Well, here, the septal defect then is a hole in the wall between the left ventricle and the right ventricle. That's bad because if you remember your normal flow, this is all oxygenated blood here going out the aorta and it's got to go to the body and the body needs all that oxygen well with this hole then we have some of the oxygenated blood going to the right ventricle which might even make it enlarged and then this blood goes to the lungs if you remember right and it's doesn't need to be oxygenated again so that is one example of a septal defect and now I'd like to just get rid of that one and just go to my other drawing here to show you that this is an atrial septal defect remember the last one was a ventricular the other, last one had a hole here you can see my laser pointer I'm sure you can now this one has a hole in the wall between the left atrium and the right atrium Again, that's going to be bad because then we're not going to get our good blood flow out the left ventricle. Now, this isn't in a box drawing, so the uh, plumbing is a little hard to understand here. But anyway, here it is, the atrial septal defect. Okay, another heart-related defect is congestive heart failure. This is like a can of worms there are so many things that can be going on here uh, congestive heart failure I've had a couple dogs older dogs die of this it ends up being for older dogs sometimes the heart just plays out because it's pumped so much and things are going wrong and it gets bigger or hypertrophies which we'll see here in a minute it's um, many things congestive heart failure it tends to be chronic so maybe that might be a word that you're not familiar with 
So, chronic. Here's the definition. Persisting for a long time or constantly recurring. Something that's chronic. You might want to write down the antonym of chronic. Acute, A-C-U-T-E. You could look it up in the dictionary. Acute versus chronic. Well, ends up being, there's it manifests itself different ways. So, let's do a couple things here. Let's look at this diagram that shows a normal heart, and I'm going to probably overlay that and enlarge it. And I'll do that so we can see it better. The, the left side image is normal, and I won't go through all the labels, but you remember the left ventricle has a thicker wall. It's got a pump to the whole body, and of course the real flow is out the cranial pole of the heart. But notice that thickness, but in this case it's called dilated cardiomyopathy. The wall gets thinner and therefore it's less likely to pump blood to the whole body and that's depicted by the arrow size small arrows versus larger arrows that's too thin too dilated okay let me get rid of that sometimes we get a case where the walls get thicker now I'm going to show this diagram here or actually picture of a real heart I think it was a cat heart but I need to orientate you so I need to get this one down here too so on the right is a beautiful artist's drawing of a heart I could never draw it that well but I wanted to show you how this left picture is cut to show you the view so if you go back to the right picture if you did a cut like my black line and then you look down on that cut surface so this arrow is saying hey let's cut it and then look at it from this perspective then that's what you're seeing in this left image and so the walls are very thick and very thick, and we'll get to the word hypertrophy, but that means there's less volume of blood that can be pumped to the body. So this is another case. There's all kinds of things that happen in congestive heart failure, but that's a pretty good illustration. Okay, so let me get a hypertrophy out here because that's what's happening to the walls of that heart. Hypertrophy, the definition, abnormal enlargement of a body part or organ hypertrophy you think when you spell it you spell hypertrophy isn't it but when you pronounce it you say hypertrophy okay so let me get rid of some of that stuff or maybe I can just go over here's another case of and I can go over here of hypertrophy and I'll enlarge this just enough that I can see it and the left side depicts a normal heart you know the left ventricle is thicker than the right it doesn't show the right here but then when you get too thick of walls that's not good because now some of the blood might even backflow up against the normal flow and go into the left atrium which it never is supposed to do normal case it doesn't it all goes out the aorta here it's even back flowing and of course then the body is not going to get all of the blood that it should be okay and I did move that one out of the way so we're all set okay now we're going to talk about a patent ductus arteriosus so let me get that word over here patent ductus arteriosus pretty common in newborn puppies 
It's very interesting, and it happens in probably a lot of animals. I know it happens in humans as well. It's very interesting because something that's normal in the fetus, if it persists, then it's abnormal in the neonate. The fetus, remember, is the developing puppy or human in the uterus, and the neonate, N-E-O-N-A-T-E, the neonate is the newborn. So, patent. Let's isolate that word. And what the definition is, it means open or affording free passage from one of my online dictionaries. So what is it actually? Well, we need to get this diagram here and I'll enlarge it and then I got to explain it because it's very important. It may be well, it's a little fuzzy, but not too bad. Okay, well, you recognize this as, as the heart, hopefully. And I'm not going to go through the chambers and the blood flow and all that because you should know that by now. I want to concentrate on this label here, PDA, patent ductus arteriosus. It's a route for blood in the fetus. Now, pay particular attention because the arrows are showing what it happens, how what happens in the neonate, that means the newborn. But in the fetus, here's what I want to say. In the fetus, you should know that this is the pulmonary artery. From our previous discussions, you know that carries blood to the lungs. And it, you know, gets oxygenated, the blood gets oxygenated. But lo and behold, in the fetus, the lungs aren't working. They're not needed. The fetus is in an aqueous environment. There's no air to be found. And so the lungs are not operating. That's an interesting discussion too. So actually in the fetus, when blood is pumped from the right ventricle out through the pulmonary artery, this little pathway carries blood to the aorta and then out through the body because there's a lot of resistance to go this way and resistance to go this way because the lungs are not inflated. They're closed. They really don't need this blood. So in the fetus, let me say again, the heart contracts and a lot of the blood in the pulmonary artery goes into the aorta and then out to the body through this open vessel. Now, when the fetus is born, then it's called a neonate, and then this vessel, this shortcut, shrinks and becomes non-functional, supposedly. If it persists, then we get what the picture shows. The aortic blood goes this way, and that's supposed to be fresh oxygenated blood, and all of it should go to the body, but it doesn't. It goes back here and then to the lungs again, which it doesn't have to do because it is already oxygenated. So when that's persistent, when that stays after birth, that's bad. And that's what a PDA is. Okay, so now a PDA you can't say is all or none. It's like, it could be like very large and the animal may die within days or hours after birth. If it's smaller, the animal might live and might not be thrifty. And if it's like leaking a little bit, that animal might live the normal lifespan and no one would ever know that it's there. So you get all these gradations. So let me show you an actual picture of one. Here's a heart. I think it was out of a cat, two cat hearts. And the suture here is around that vessel in the fetus. So this is a fetal heart. And you can see by the diameter there, it's gonna be carrying blood from the pulmonary artery and bypass the lungs and go into the aorta. After the animal's born, and I'm not sure how many weeks or days after birth this heart is here on the right, but you can see that vessel has decreased in size and it ends up being 
basically non-functional and more like a ligament, solid and not conveying any blood. So this would be normal. This is normal in the fetus, but if it stays that large and functional in the newborn, then it would be abnormal. So again, the PDA, something that's necessary in the fetus, if it persists, which it shouldn't, then in the neonate it's bad. In this case, this is a normal heart where that ductus arteriosus has shrunk and become non-functional. That's what you want after birth. Finally, I just want to say a word about heartworms because that's another condition that can affect our pets, especially dogs, but a lot of animals can get heartworm and I just want to show you since the adult heartworms love to live in the heart a couple images of that here's one of course these are taken after the animal has died now we're not sure if it died of old age or heartworm or a combination thereof but probably died of heartworm infestation so you can see although it's kind of been capped off here this is the heart the red area and the heartworms are what look like spaghetti here we're probably already down into the ventricles so adult heartworms can be many inches and basically it's filling up the heart chambers with these worms okay i'll move that over a little bit and get one more image and show you another heart obviously out of the animal and showing you again heartworms that have filled up and we haven't seen the interior of this heart we're not seeing that because this is the outside of the heart by the way if you don't recognize that but on the cranial pole of the heart at least we see a lot of worms that are being expelled out of this cut surface. That's it for today.